Hey Vogue, I'm Charlie Puth and we are in my home state of New Jersey and today I'm going to take you around some places from my childhood that mean a whole lot to me. Come! Okay, so this looks completely different. I remember my first jazz concert here. I was so nervous, kind of like I am right now. I really hope this looks the same. Oh my god, it does. Is the ceiling still falling down? This is the Count Basie Theater. I saw the Cranberries here. I think I saw Tony Bennett here one time too. I saw the Beach Boys here. Wow. Okay, so they fixed the ceiling. Same chairs though. I remember coming to like jazz camp here and there were like the first two rows were sold out. I was too afraid to sing in front of people so I just played piano the entire time. And then to maybe like 10 years later, come back and see a sold out crowd for my first show. That was a pretty good feeling. I first started coming here when I was, Dad, how old was I? 10. I remember my teacher said, if you have abnormally large hands, you're gonna be a fine piano player. I've always been very self-conscious of my hands ever since then, because it's a strange thing to say to somebody, especially a 10 year old. Um, but I guess I can reach the notes pretty, pretty well. He was a good teacher, just a weird thing to say. The stage is a lot smaller than I remember it being. This is a wonderful venue, wonderful sound too. Really nice reverberation. My mom taught me piano first when I was four years old. Sorry, I'm eating Tic Tacs. Mm. My mom taught me piano when I was four years old and I always would hear her play um, the same piece by Clementi. That was my alarm clock, just her play, waking up and playing the piano. So I had a natural inclination to just walk over to the piano and try and play it all the time. And I think that's how I developed the whole perfect pitch thing that I have. Follow me, is what I will say. Now we are leaving Red Bank, New Jersey. We are leaving the Count Basie Theater and we are going uptown to Harlem, 121st in Claremont's and Manhattan School of Music, where I started when I was 14 years old. I'll see you there. <laughs> right now we're on the fifth floor of Manhattan School of Music, where I spent 2004, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, six years of my musical life. My favorite thing was to walk down the hall and hear the conglomerate of like all the different types of music. This was the classroom. Jeremy Fletcher was my teacher, and we there. And they, I hear, but this is the exciting part. You hear so many different sounds and noises. This was my first class at 11 a.m. I'd come here. And then I always was hopeful to graduate to the, uh, the intermediate jazz. This was the beginner jazz. I'm so scared to like open the door. I, 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 have, like, <laughs> I have war memories of like opening the wrong door and disrupting music class and the teacher yelling at me. You guys can go in your class if you want. Okay, thank you. Hello, Mr. Booth. What, 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 what is the class? It's um, our musical theater it's history class. Musical theater, want to join? Can I, can, can yeah. I? Yeah. Oh my God. Do you want to? Hey guys, here's a surprise. What are you guys learning? Beguiling beauty with outstanding dance technique, natural acting ability, and a powerful charisma. Her career skyrocketed. Joan McCracken was unable to sustain her success. Within a short time, she dropped out of the public eye and descended into an untimely and tragically early death. We're in Hell's Kitchen. We're at Berkeley's newest studio. This is the, uh, the song that my mom would play every morning. It's like the classical piece of music. And every morning I would hear same thing over and over again. And that's how, I think that's literally how the pitches got into, uh, stuck into my head. The thing that I enjoy about TikTok the most is seeing how people interpret things. You give them something and then they take it and remix it. And I love uh, feeding my viewers 
on TikTok um, a demo of a song, a song that I'm thinking about putting out and them uh, opening up a, a isotope and isolating the vocals and remixing it. I'm making an entire album pretty much off TikTok right now and I'm just giving little blurbs of each song. And I originally got the idea, uh, I remember when I made Stay for Kid Leroy, Kid Leroy took out his cell phone and just went on Instagram Live and f filmed him Self, like, you know, I do the same thing I told you. Like, and I was like, dude, you're leaking the song. The song's not even done. And he was like, trust me, people are gonna wanna hear this early on. So he's the first person I ever saw like leak a song that had just been <laughs> literally birthed. What can I do with my brand to make my audience feel involved? And on the songwriting level, which is my whole thing, uh, if they feel like they're involved in the song from the very beginning, they're gonna number one, know the lyrics, and number two, feel like they wrote it with me, in a way, so they feel connected to it. That's an ugly couple of notes if you put it together. And then you can like put a little bass note in it. And it's like, it's actually the first chord to Bad and Bougie by Migos. But when you add more, when you add more notes in between, you add the fifth. It's like, okay, now it's still kind of creepy, but like when you add the little colorful C sharp and the A flat, like the My hope is when I perform these songs, I, I and, and I try to hide this as best I can when I'm on stage. I'm so used to being in here, perfecting and tuning every vocal and making sure that it sounds perfect and I'm so, worried that like my voice will fluctuate and pitch live and I'm never happy with uh, how I perform. I hope that uh, you know these songs are in a little little bit of a lower key, a bit easier to digest melodically. It's not so Charlie Poof, ooh, over, all over the place. I actually was here a couple of weeks ago with my record label um, playing uh, my album for them, uh, which I was quite nervous about because I've never played them a full body of work before. I've always been expected to just deliver like one-off singles, so I, I never thought they would want to hear a complete body of work from me, so that was very exciting. They're seeing like the real side of me, which is a side they've never seen before. They've seen a very surface level, oh, he's a producer who puts out catchy music kind of thing. They never. I, I, but at the same time, I never thought they cared about that. I never thought anybody cared about like what went on in my life. And I, I don't know, now for some reason people do, which makes me happy. It makes explaining the music a little bit easier. I'm gonna call it Charlie, because I've never had a chance to, it's like a self-titled album, but I've never had a chance to put out music that is, you know, in three, two, one, cliche sentence, but like is truly me and every song is like just my personality with some melody attached to it.